And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Mimora Pelta, which was a request from Paleo Mike 716 via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. As I mentioned earlier, it was an ankylosaur, specifically a notosaurid, so no club tail, and it lived in the late Jurassic and what is now Colorado and Utah in the U.S. in the Morrison Formation, where Allosaurus is from. Speaking of that sci-fi <laughs> film. So we know partly what it needed its armor for. <laughs> My Morapelta looked similar to Notosaurus. It was heavily armored and covered in scutes, and it had spikes coming out of its sides. It walked on all fours. It had a long tail. It was low to the ground, and it had a small, elongated head. It's estimated to grow up to almost 10 feet or 3 meters long. Oh, it's tiny for an ankylosaur. Yeah, and to weigh about 660 to 1,230 pounds or 300 to 560 kilograms. So lightweight. For an ankylosaur. <laughs> yes, it's one of the smallest known ankylosaurs, and it's the smallest known four-legged dinosaur from the Morrison Formation. That's a good point, yeah, because usually the four-legged things are big and heavy, not mm -hmm. under 10 feet. <laughs> the skull hasn't been described in detail, but it looked similar to Gargoylosaurus, which is also from the Morrison Formation. And Gargoylosaurus was named in 1988. So it had a narrow snout and triangular skull. Mimora Pelta also had two large horns on the brow and two horns on the cheek and small leaf-shaped teeth. It had 13 ribs and four sacral ribs, which are rib-like structures around the sacrum, which is connected to the pelvis. And it had short limbs, which makes sense. It's low to the ground. It would be funny if it had really long limbs. <laughs> <laughs> According to Kirkland and Carpenter, who named Mimora Pelta, they said, quote, the proportions of the ulna and ilium in Mimora Pelta suggest it had a stance reminiscent of that observed in stegosaurs with its high, narrow hips and short, powerful forelimbs or arms. It also, Mimora Pelta, had a somewhat flexible tail. It's more flexible than ankylosaurid tails that were strongly fused. Its tail vertebrae were longer than they were wide, and it had spikes on the tail. Its tail may have been used for defense or for fighting other notosaurids. It also had large spiky osteoderms on its side and back. And five armor types have been found with Mimora Pelta. There are long spines with a hollow base and a long groove up the side. Thin triangular plates with a narrow asymmetric hollow base. Small blade-like spines with a rounded solid base. Isolated flat scutes. And scutes fused into a single sheet of armor. Hmm. I like the fused into a sheet of armor strategy. Yeah. Now, the large spine was probably at the base of the neck and then pointed outward. Yeah, so like out the shoulders, basically. Mm hmm The thin triangular plates were probably attached lower down the body and to the tail. Part of the sacral shield was preserved, and that included a small piece of armor that has one large osteoderm surrounded by smaller osteoderms, and it looks flower-like. It also had keeled osteoderms, or bosses, and elevated knobs as well on the sacral shield. And its back and tail were covered in small osteoderms in between larger plates of armor. This is based on comparisons to Sauropelta, why we think that. Cool. So that, that big shield fused piece was over the sacrum. That kind of makes sense because you don't need as much flexibility mm -hmm. where everything's all rigid. Yeah. Might as well have armor. <laughs> My Morapelta lived in a semi-arid environment with wet and dry seasons, and there were floodplains. And as for what it ate, it had a high relative bite force based on its jaw joint. That's not something you hear for ankylosaurs very often. <laughs> That's true. It was probably a low browser, and it probably was a selective feeder because it had a narrow snout, so it was a little pickier. And it probably ate cycads and conifers. The type and only species is My Morapelta mazai. It was described by Jim Kirkland and Kenneth Carpenter in 1994. The genus name means Mygat's shield, and it was named in honor of Vanetta Moore and Pete and Marilyn Mygat, who found the Mygat Moore quarry where the fossils were found. Makes sense. It does. The species name is in honor of Chris Mays, president of the Dynamation International Corporation and Society, who funded excavating the quarry. Dynamation? Yeah. It sounds like dinosaur animation. It does. But I didn't look it up, so I don't know. I kind of doubt that's what it is. <laughs> the quarry site was found in March 1981 by Peter Marilyn Mygat and John D. and Vanetta Moore, quote, while on an excursion in the high desert of western Colorado, end quote. That's according to Kirkland and Carpenter. 
I think they were hiking. And then the fossils were first found in 1990. This quarry is, according to Kirkland and Carpenter, quote, interpreted as an attritional accumulation of abundant dinosaur remains at a permanent waterhole, end quote. So it could be that animals were killed there coming down to the waterhole to drink, or animals died of thirst and or starvation at the waterhole during a drought, or they became trapped in the mud along the margin of the waterhole when they're seeking water during dry periods when the waterhole was small. There's a lot of evidence of scavenging or, and or subsequent trampling, so any specific cause of death for any particular animal, we don't know. However, in this quarry, Mymora pelta is the third of most common dinosaur that's been found. For reference, Allosaurus is the most common, and then it goes Apatosaurus. Sounds a little bit like the Cleveland Lloyd quarry. A little bit, With yeah. all the Allosaurus. What's going on with all these Allosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> Mymora pelta was the first known late Jurassic ankylosaur from North America and one of the earliest known notosaurids. The holotype includes a left hip bone with bite marks, vertebrae, ribs, limb bones, and lots of osteoderms. It's got a fused vertebral column, so the holotype's considered to be an adult. Kirkland and Carpenter said, quote, although it is obvious the animal was fed upon, it cannot be determined if the animal was killed by a predator or simply scavenged, end quote. That's the case a lot of the times. Yep, it's hard to know. It's easy to, the only thing you can usually prove is that it wasn't killed by an attack because you can see some growth Mm -hmm. over the injuries. But if it's dead and something's chewing on it, you can't tell plus or minus a couple days (laughs) where that fits in. Yeah, we've talked about that with ourselves, you know, if we've reading chicken wings, (laughs) there's no signs of, you know, did I hunt that chicken or... Did Did someone else hunt it? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now, the bite marks found on Mymora pelta may be from a very large allosaurus, an unusually large one, as it was described, or some other large carnivorous dinosaur, because again, it's so hard to tell from a bite mark a specific dinosaur. Over 160 bones of Mymora pelta have been found, and they were scattered over 27 yards or 25 meters of the 1,600 square foot or 150 square meter quarry. Although it's disarticulated, according to Kirkland and Carpenter, Mymora pelta is, quote, one of the most complete Jurassic ankylosaurids described to date, and, quote, the smallest adult quadrupedal dinosaur yet identified in the Morrison Formation. So an important one. You'd say that about every ankylosaur. I don't know. They're not all important. (laughs) Wow. One that's really complete is more important than one where we just have a couple of bones (laughs) and are from a formation with, like, another ankylosaur or something. Hmm. Well, in addition to all those bones, they also found a small dinosaur egg that was less than four inches or 10 centimeters in diameter with, quote, unique ornithischian style microstructure. So this egg was associated with the ankylosaur. Ah, so maybe it's an ankylosaur egg. Maybe. A Mymora pelta egg, perhaps. Another thing that's so hard to tell. Yeah. But because no other ornithischians are known from the quarry and none of the saurischian dinosaurs, other than maybe a small theropod, from this area were small enough to have laid such a small egg, Kirkland and Carpenter wrote, quote, we suspect that egg may have been aborted on the death of the ankylosaur. Although speculative, if the egg belongs to the ankylosaur, it suggests that the death of the animal may have been sudden, perhaps by the animal being trapped in the mud and then killed or at least scavenged. That's kind of sad. Yeah. But on the bright side, now we have that thing fossilized so we can learn about it. If it was a sudden death, at least it didn't suffer. There you go. There's a silver lining. (laughs) Kirkland and others also referred a partial skeleton to Mymora pelta in 1998 that was found in Cactus Park, Colorado, but the fossil was still being prepared at the time that they referred it. And this partial skeleton included vertebrae, chevrons from under the tail vertebrae, sacrum as part of the pelvis, and a lot of armor, including parts of the sacral shield that covered the top of the pelvis. More bones have been found at the quarry since, including a nearly complete skull and nearly all parts of the body except for the pubis and femur, so a hip bone and a leg bone. The fossils are at the Dinosaur Journey Museum of Western Colorado in Fruta, Colorado. There was another specimen found near Hanksville, Utah, and that included more osteoderms, ribs, a vertebra, and femur. And another Mymora pelta specimen was found in 2014 in the Hanksville Burpee Quarry, which is According to Katie Tremaine and others, a, quote, sauropod-dominated bone bed. Hmm. 
So there's eight known specimens of Mymora pelta, and four of them are known in sauropod territory, sauropod localities. Yeah, you've got an ankylosaur coexisting with an apatosaurus. Isn't yeah. that nice? That is nice. <laughs> <laughs> So other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include Apatosaurus and Allosaurus, of course, and Ceratosaurus and possibly Nanosaurus. And other animals that lived around the same time and place include lots of snails and fish. Hmm. Snails. Yeah. We don't bring them up that often. Talk about turtles way more. Yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left.